What's up? Today I'm working on my Roger Riviere uh, French bicycle. It's kind of a, the uh, bike has an interesting personal story, but the character Riviere himself has an interesting story. Um, first off, I need to change out these bars. I built this bike up uh, a couple years ago um, as a touring bike, but I put these super narrow bars on it. They kind of have a flare, which at the time I thought for a little off-road would be good. But they're so narrow, I don't enjoy riding it anymore. <laughs> um, anyways, this is my friend Josh's bike. He wanted me to fix it up for him. Someone had converted it into this like goofy hybrid with these goofy bars and this super heavy triple crank set, dumb pedals, just kind of made it a disaster. Josh wasn't a real bike nerd, but he was a history nerd. So I think he looked up Riviera and he thought it was a really nice French bike. It's actually a really cheap French bike, but regardless, he wanted me to rebuild it back into like a more, you know, 10 speed um, racer style bike. Unfortunately, he passed away and I never got to do that for him. So I took the bike, his dad gave it to me, and I built it up into something that, you know, I could ride and remember him by. So even though the frame is nothing too special, I've kind of turned it into something cool. And I could go through some of those little things we did to make it a unique bike. I've got over 1,500 miles on the thing. I uh, did a lot of touring on it and yeah. Roger Rivieri was an excellent time trialist, and he actually won the three-time World Pursuit Championship on the track. He held the hour record for nine years. He broke it twice. Also, cloth bar tape. Um, love it for the vintage aesthetic on some of my other bikes that it makes sense for, but on a bike that I want to be a little more comfortable, uh, yeah, I, don't, I won't even ride this thing without gloves. In the 1960 Tour de France, he was in second place and he was following the world's best asunder down a mountain on a stage. He, um, they went around a bend, he hit a low wall and went over into the ravine. He broke his back and was paralyzed for the rest of his life. At the time, he tried to blame the mechanics, saying the brakes weren't working, but he later sold his story to a newspaper for money, admitting that he was so hopped up on painkillers he's not sure if he ever actually touched his brake. Later in life, he had a number of businesses, a restaurant, a garage, and all of them failed. Uh, he died when he was only 40 of throat cancer. Oh yeah, this is so much better. Nice wide bars, nice soft bar tape. Yeah, really made an improvement to this old bike. So my bike is a typical bike boom bike. They couldn't pump them out of the French factories fast enough to sell them to the States in the 70s. Riviera's line of bikes were mostly made by Jetan. Uh, mine looks a little different, has a slightly different logo and on the head badge actually says Saint Etienne. But it's hard to say because Saint um, Jetons were built in Saint Etienne as well. So I'm not sure if it's just um, the way the typography looks or if it's actually made by a different company. Either way, it's made in one of the factories in Saint Etienne in France. And it's a fairly typical bicycle. Mine is completely changed out. The only thing original are the frame and forks. The wheels were new. I found them pretty pretty cheap from a bike store on eBay. Um, I converted from 27 and a quarter to 700 C so I could have more clearance. So I actually can fit 38s on it, making it a little more gravel friendly. I really like that. The cranks and the rings are from a Schwinn I had. The cassette is new. The front derailleur was new. Um, I got the Brook saddle from my friend Woody. I traded for photos and a wheel set. And my friend Ken gave me the bars and the stem, which I'm putting on, which are probably the nicest thing on the bike. I actually can't remember what I pulled the shifters from. They actually might be from my dad's Motobicon because I know I switched out the shifters on that bike. So yeah, the Riviera has be kind of become my backup now to the um, gravel bike, my rally. Uh, Right now I need to fix my Raleigh's brakes and I'm having a little trouble with the front derailleur, but I wanted to hit a little bit of uh, off-road. So 
with 38s on that I could hit some light gravels, you know, stuff that's not too gnarly and it does the job perfectly. So yeah, I don't really I don't envision taking it on long tours anymore or anything like that, but it's a great around town bike or with the rack if I need to carry stuff or getting a little off-road like this.